stupidity is much the same all the world over. The liberty of the individual must be thus far limited. He must not make himself a nuisance to other people. He who knows only his own side of the case knows little of that. The love of power and the love of liberty are in eternal antagonism. He must be able to hear them from persons who actually believe them. He must know them in their most plausible and persuasive form. That principle is that the sole end for which mankind is warranted, individually or collectively in interfering with the liberty of action of any of their number, is self-protection. A person may cause evil to others not only by his actions, but by his inaction, and in either case, he is justly accountable to them for the injury. Language is the light of the mind. I believe in spectacles, but I think eyes are necessary too. It is not because men's desires are strong that they act ill, it is because their consciences are weak. No one but a fool, and only a fool of a peculiar description, feels offended by the acknowledgement that there are others whose opinion, and even whose wish, is entitled to a greater amount of consideration than his. Logic is not the science of belief, but the science of proof or evidence. There is the greatest difference between presuming an opinion to be true, because, with every opportunity for contesting it, it has not been refuted, and assuming its truth for the purpose of not permitting its refutation. In every respect, the burden is hard on those who attack an almost universal opinion. It is with philosophy as with religion, men marvel at the absurdity of other people's tenets, while exactly parallel absurdities remain in their own. We know how easily the uselessness of almost every branch of knowledge may be proved to the complete satisfaction of those who do not possess it. Civil or social liberty, the nature and limits of the power which can be legitimately exercised by society over the individual. After the primary necessities of food and raiment, freedom is the first and strongest want of human nature. Every man who says frankly and fully what he thinks is so far doing a public service, we should be grateful to him for attacking most unsparingly our most cherished opinions. No one can be a great thinker who does not recognize that as a thinker it is his first duty to follow his intellect to whatever conclusions it may lead. Each is the proper guardian of his own health, whether bodily or mental or spiritual.
The only chance is to treat not happiness, but some end external to it as the purpose of life. The worth of a state in the long run is the worth of the individuals composing it. There have been, and may be again, great individual thinkers in a general atmosphere of mental slavery. By happiness is intended pleasure and the absence of pain, by unhappiness, pain, and the privation of pleasure. Over himself, over his own body and mind, the individual is sovereign. The enjoyments of life are sufficient to make it a pleasant thing when they are taken in passant without being made a principal object. I will call no being good who is not what I mean when I apply that epithet to my fellow creatures, and if such a creature can sentence me to hell for not so calling him, to hell I will go. Persons of genius, it is true, are, and are always likely to be, a small minority, but in order to have them, it is necessary to preserve the soil in which they grow. I consider it presumption in anyone to pretend to decide what women are or are not, can or cannot be, by natural constitution. On the average, a person who cares for other people, for his country or for mankind, is a happier man than one who does not. Command and obedience are but unfortunate necessities of human life. Society inequality is its normal state. Names have been further distinguished into univocal and equivocal. These, however, are not two kinds of names, but two different modes of employing names. The absolute and essential importance of human development in its richest diversity. So true is that unnatural generally means only uncustomary, and that everything which is usual appears natural. The time appears to me to have come when it is the duty of all to make their descent from religion known. One person with a belief is equal to the force of 100,000 who have only interests. No wise man ever acquired his wisdom in any mode but this, nor is it in the nature of human intellect to become wise in any other manner. There are no means of finding what either one person or many can do, but by trying, and no means by which anyone else can discover for them what it is for their happiness to do or leave undone.
So long as an opinion is strongly rooted in the feelings, it gains, rather than loses, instability by having a preponderating weight of argument against it. Both teachers and learners go to sleep at their post as soon as there is no enemy in the field. A person whose desires and impulses are his own are the expression of his own nature as it has been developed and modified by his own culture is said to have a character. One person with a belief is a social power equal to 99 who have only interests. A party of order or stability and a party of progress or reform are both necessary elements of a healthy state of political life. Truth gains more even by the errors of one who, with due study and preparation, thinks for himself than by the true opinions of those who only hold them because they do not suffer themselves to think. One whose desires and impulses are not his own has no character, no more than a steam engine has character. History is teeming with instances of truth put down by persecution. If not put down forever, it may be set back for centuries. All errors which he is likely to commit against advice and warning are far outweighed by the evil of allowing others to constrain him to what they deem his good. Mankind are greater gainers by suffering each other to live as seems good to themselves than by compelling each to live as seems good to the rest. I have learned to seek my happiness by limiting my desires rather than in attempting to satisfy them. It is contrary to reason and experience to suppose that there can be any real check to brutality consistent with leaving the victim still in the power of the executioner. The idea that truth always triumphs over persecution is one of those pleasant falsehoods which most experience refutes. If any opinion is compelled to silence, that opinion may, for aught we can certainly know, be true. To deny this is to assume our own infallibility. It is given to no human being to stereotype a set of truths and walk safely by their guidance with his mind's eye closed. Ask yourself whether you are happy and you cease to be so. Which of the quotes do you like the most? Please leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.